We're now moving into items that I carry toward the top of my pack where I might need access to them um, before I get to camp. The first item I'm going to talk about is a water filter. Now you really need to treat your water out there. In the backcountry it may seem the water's pristine, but in most places the water is contaminated with parasites and so on and so forth. So you need to treat your water. So use a water filter like this nice little unit by Catadyne. Pumps water really quickly, really efficiently. You can also use simple devices like this life straw, which you just would um, filter water straight from the lake or the stream. At the very basic level, you need to have iodine tablets. Um, these will treat the water and make it drinkable and kill any um, bacteria, parasites, so on and so forth. The next item I have toward the top of my pack um, would be my toilet kit. And that would be, I need a trowel, I need toilet paper, and enough for a few days worth, right? And some hand sanitizer. The next, I have my ditty bag. So this is all my personal items. Um, I wear contacts and have glasses, so I carry that in here along with my toothbrush. If you have any prescription medications, you'd want to carry those too. Um, feminine products and so on and so forth. Make sure with the prescriptions that you have more than enough, more than it's adequate for the days you're going to be out. If something happens, there's an emergency or you got held up due to bad weather, um, you definitely want to make sure you have a couple of extra days worth of your prescription medication. My first aid kit. You can buy first aid kits from REI or other um, outdoor vendors. Um, they come in kits that will say like, well this is a multi-day kit, it's good for four days for four, four or five people. You can add extra things in there. I always add a few extra things that I think are worthwhile to have that might not be uh, included or might not have as much of as I like, say like ibuprofen um, and um, some extra bandages. Wilderness travel and backcountry travel, you're remote, you're not close to help, um, definitive care is many miles or hours away. You really need to get sufficient training. So I encourage everybody, if you're going to be spending a lot of time out in the backcountry doing wilderness trips, you should take a wilderness first responder or wilderness first aid class at the very minimum. Take a first aid and CPR class, say, from the Red Cross. Um, some of these things that I'm, talking, that I'm going to talk about, say, for instance, like the SAM splint, which is really great for helping to mobilize fractures or injuries to limbs or joints. Um, these things are really handy, uh, but you need to know how to use them properly, especially things like an EpiPen. If anybody has a serious allergy, say bees or nuts, um, epinephrine and EpiPen might be the, a life and death um, thing that you would definitely want to have if they went into anaphylactic shock. But you need to know how to use it and administer it properly and you have to have a prescription for it. Another thing is tourniquets. Unfortunately we learned a lot about tourniquets um, through the Af Afghan and um, Iraq wars and the casualties that ensued from that. Tourniquets are a great way to stop a massive, um, say, arterial bleed, but you need to know how to apply them properly. So get the training um, and um, understand how and when different items are appropriate. The next item I have at the top of my pack would be um, my bear rope. So if I'm going into the mountains, um, in most places, bears are present. Um, part of the things that we want to do out there is we don't want to habituate any animals or have them be getting into our food and then possibly messing with us while we're out there. We need to hang our food at night at the most minimum to get it up off the ground about 20 feet and about 5 or 6 feet out away from the trunk of the tree. And we can do that by throwing a rope up over a solid tree limb, um, a nice, having a carabiner to attach, say, a stuff sack full of food is going to be nice. So I would have my food in my bag, I'd get my rope up over the tree, and then just haul up my food into the tree for the night. 
Another thing that a lot of national parks are actually requiring nowadays are bear-proof containers like this. And um, you just stuff all your food in there and yeah, they're kind of bulky, um, but they're definitely not going to let any critters um, be getting into your food. And next we're going to move into the top compartment of our pack.